Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I'm a junior doctor working in Cambridge. And in this video, I'm gonna be unboxing this new 2018 15 inch MacBook Pro. I'll be getting it set up and then I'm gonna do a quick whistle stop tour through all of the different apps that I use on a daily basis for things like productivity, making notes, apps I used to use as a student, but also stuff that I use to make videos and to make my life a little bit more efficient and more productive whenever I'm on my computer. As always, timestamps to everything that I'm gonna talk about are gonna be linked in the video description. So if you don't like unboxings or if you wanna see a particular app, you can just find it in the description and click to that time stamp. But now let's just jump into it. Let's unbox this thing and get it set up. I'm very excited. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh yes. Look at that. It's so shiny, isn't it? Oh my God. Let's uh, unbox this bad boy. Oh wow. This thing is huge. Look at that. Apparently an unboxing is supposed to show what's in the box. So here's a cable, USB-C cable designed by Apple in California thing. Here is the charging gizmo. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so I've got this laptop set up now. I'm now in the process of downloading a lot of these apps. So let's get started with what I think is the most important app for my personal productivity, and that is Alfred. Now, Alfred acts as a spotlight replacement, which means that when you press command and spacebar, you get the little search box that comes up, and then you can type anything into that. So you can search Google, you can search files, you can you can open any app, and it's just a lot more efficient than using using the trackpad and kind of clicking on the thing, clicking on the dock, and then opening, opening the icon. My theory when it comes to being productive on a computer is that A, it's about, kind of on a broad perspective doing the right things. But secondly, it's also about being quick at operating the computer itself. So for example, let's say I want to open a file. I know what file I want to open, but I want to minimize the amount of time it takes for that file to get open. If I had to do the, the whole using the mouse thing, I'd have to click on the dog, click on finder, and find it through my folders. And it would take about 10 seconds of my life. And when this process gets repeated ad infinitum, because I spend hours and hours at a computer every day, it just ends up wasting a lot of time. And then we die with regrets. But when you're using something like Alfred, if you know the name of the file, you can just do command space bar and then type the name of the file and it opens up. And within about one second, you've got this file open up that you want. So you reduce this kind of lag time. So that's why I use Alfred. Number two, I really like Moom, which is a utility that lets you snap windows to the side. Windows has had this feature for ages, but for some reason, Macs don't have it natively. So you do need a third party app for that. You can use a keyboard shortcut like command shift M, which is what I use. And then you can just type in left or right. And then that snaps the window to either side of the screen. I also really like the app Bartender. Bartender just kind of cleans up those icons that you get in the corner. And because I fancy myself a bit of a minimalist, I like that list of icons being minimal, you know? So it, it only shows the most important thing. So for example, my battery and Wi-Fi. whereas all the other things like Google Drive, Adobe Creative Cloud, all the other kind of apps that stay open, but just have their icons, they get hidden behind these three dots, which look quite classy. So Alfred, Moom and Bartender are probably the utilities that I use most often. In terms of apps that I use for creating stuff, I do use the Adobe Creative Cloud. I've got the monthly subscription that gives me everything. Um, back when I was a student, this was quite cheap. It's now become a lot more expensive. So I'll need to probably reconsider how much I'm spending on this sort of stuff. But the apps I use every day, almost every day are firstly Lightroom, which I use for editing all my Instagram photos and everything for Facebook. I use Photoshop quite a lot to make like graphics and things for, for my websites. I use Adobe Audition to occasionally do some audio editing for these videos. And very occasionally I use After Effects. I'm not an expert at using After Effects, but I do like downloading templates for it and modifying them. So for example, for my Medical Mondays intro. Anyway, so those are the four Adobe Creative Cloud apps that I use most often. Um, in terms of video editing, I use Final Cut Pro and in terms of music editing for my, well, when I do songs or covers of songs or like guitar or piano parts, I use Logic Pro for that. And the nice thing about this is that with the Apple education bundle for about 200 pounds, it's still quite a lot of money. You can get Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro and Compressor and Motion and these other Apple apps and you get them all for 200 pounds in total. And this makes it much, much more affordable rather than the monthly fee that you have to pay to use the Adobe products. Anyway, moving on, uh, obviously I use Spotify to listen to music. I tried using Apple Music, didn't really like it. Even though I'm an Apple fanboy in almost every other regard, I think Spotify does have a superior product. The to-do list app I like to use is called Things. Now, yes, this is again expensive. Um, expensive is, is all relative. I have zero qualms about paying for software, especially software that I use daily, especially software that saves me time. And I've really fallen in love with things and the getting things done kind of approach to productivity and efficiency. There's a few books on that that I'll link in the description below. So things is basically a very nicely designed to-do list that lets you pretty much add anything to it. You've got an inbox, you've got like a someday list, you've got a today list, and you've got all these different areas of your life that you can organize. So for example, my YouTube videos is one area of my life. My kind of medical work is another area. So you can categorize things very nicely using things. So that's the to-do list app that I like to use. The app that I use for making notes is called Bear. Now I used to use Evernote for absolutely ages, but then I switched to Bear a couple of years ago because it's like Evernote started to get very bloated and very slow. Uh, but then I switched to Bear, which is a much more simple writing experience. And the nice thing about Bear is that you can write in Markdown. 
Uh, Markdown is just like a very easy way of formatting text that gives you headings and bold and italics. So if I'm writing my weekly emails, which you can subscribe to in this link down below, or if I'm writing a blog post, um, my blog is hosted on Ghost and Ghost lets you write in Markdown. So all I have to do is write something in bare and then I just copy and paste it as Markdown into Ghost and then it appears nicely formatted on my website. So that's what I use Bear for. And I also use Bear to track my uh, workouts every time I go to the gym. I just have a single note and I just add stuff to it as I go along. Because you know, as they say, what gets measured gets managed. Another thing that I find really improves my productivity just in general is WhatsApp Web. So this is like the web client for WhatsApp, which surprisingly so many people don't know it even exists. So I'm in a lot of WhatsApp groups as I'm sure a lot of people are. And I talked to a lot of my friends through WhatsApp, but I always find it annoying having to go on my phone and type with a little keyboard. And it's, it's just so inefficient compared to typing on a computer. So WhatsApp have released a Mac client. You just download it, you scan a QR code with your phone, and then you log into WhatsApp. And then you get WhatsApp messages through your MacBook, that sort of thing. So WhatsApp went really, really good. And finally, and I probably should have mentioned this much earlier, the password manager that I use is 1Password. I think it's really good. Yes, again, it costs money, but for me and for a lot of people who are who have their lives on on, on the cloud and in, in their Google, Google account or whatever, if your accounts get compromised, that would be an absolute catastrophe. So one password just basically basically makes it really easy. Like it automatically generates secure passwords for all your different websites. And in order to access them, you have to just log in with your one password. So you log into one password, the app with your one password, and then it automatically fills in your you know, secure passwords for all these different websites. And it's got loads of like security stuff behind it. And if you can, you can read more about that if you want. But pretty much everyone these days recommends using a password manager. There's also LastPass and a few others, but one password is the one that I started using and I've never really found any reason uh, to stop. So that was a very quick whistle stop tour through all of the apps that I use on a daily basis. I hope that was vaguely interesting. I've never really done much kind of the, of these tech videos, but I do want to make it more of a thing. Um, I really enjoy tech, I'm a tech enthusiast, and I quite like making these sorts of videos, so I hope it's useful. If there's anything in particular that you want me to do a more deeper dive into, then by all means, let me know in the comments and I'll add it to my list. A, a few videos I'm planning, so I'm definitely planning a really extensive video about how I use Alfred and how it supercharges my productivity, so we'll do a video about that, and then maybe a few other things related to the iPad and apps I've got on my iPhone. So yeah, I hope that was vaguely interesting. Uh, I'm very excited to be using this new MacBook Pro. Uh, it's huge and it's lovely and it's, fully spec'd out except the hard drive because that costs like $3,000 extra for the four terabytes. So I've got the one terabyte hard drive, but got all the other upgrades. So hopefully this should make my own video editing and stuff workflow much more quick. So thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing so. Have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.